Well, on May 14th of 1985, my grandmother was murdered and by, by four teenage girls, ninth grade students in high school. And one of those girls was sentenced to die in the electric chair by the state of Indiana. And I originally supported that decision of the judge, but I became convinced a short time later that my grandmother would actually have been opposed to that and would have had love and compassion for this girl and for this girl's family who was on death row. I felt she wanted someone in my family had that same sort of compassion. I felt like it fell on my shoulders, but I didn't have any compassion. But I begged my God to give me love and compassion for this girl and for her family. And that prayer was answered. And when it was answered, I knew that I no longer wanted her to die and I wanted to do whatever I could do to try to help her. She was taken off of death row after a large international campaign in 1989. Uh, she's still in prison today. She's been in for over 28 years. But within the next five days, she will be released from prison in the state of Indiana into the free world. Well, I have corresponded with her for over 25 years. Um, I have met with her in prison. And from this Congress, I will go to Indiana and I will meet with her. Um, I've told her I will take her and get her a computer and try to help her get adapted back into society. And we're trying to explore means to help her get a job. Uh, it's a very scary situation for her. I've been very uh, supportive of the international movement to abolish the death penalty because it was international pressure that helped get Paula Cooper off the of death row. Over two million people, mostly from uh, Europe, especially Italy, signed petitions to ask that she be taken off of death row. And because of that international support, Indiana changed their law and raised the age limit. And that's what got her off of death row. So for, for over 25 years, I've been very, very supportive of international efforts to bring about worldwide abolition of the death penalty. People need to realize that not all murder victim family members want revenge, that some people believe that love and compassion is the answer. The death penalty has absolutely nothing at all to do with the healing that murder victim family members need after a loved one has been killed, but actually continues the cycle of violence and creates more murder victim family members. And here at this Congress, I'm going to be talking about the journey of hope from violence to healing, which is an organization that uh, an, an idea that I came up with many years ago, led by murder victim family members that are opposed to the death penalty. And we travel around the country of the United States and around the world, and we share our stories. As we share our stories, we're also joined by family members that have loved ones on death row. They share what it's like to have somebody they love very much sitting in a jail cell waiting to die. We're also joined by people who were sentenced to death for crimes they didn't commit. And fortunately, we were able to prove their innocence before their executions could take place. But you know, we make mistakes, and when it comes to the death penalty, there's no room for mistakes, so it's got to come to an end.